Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's coming up to summer, which means to me, tote bag weather. Right in the summer, you just wanna have a bag that you can grab to throw in your day's essentials to head out for the day. So I'm gonna be showing you a tote bag, but my emphasis today is on the pockets. I've designed a tote bag that is gonna show you four different pockets, ranging from pretty darn easy to more challenging. We're gonna do the challenging one on the lining, cause that's a good place to sort of practice it up before you put it on the outside of a tote bag, but it can totally be used on the outside of a tote bag. And in fact, most of these pockets that I'm gonna show you would have other applications as well. You could put them on a shirt front or a jacket. I think you'd have lots of places where you could play around with these pocket styles I'm gonna show you. I already have two or three or four tote bag videos out and they all use different kinds of pockets. So I'll link those in the description box below so you can check out some other pockets, straps, and zipper closures. The only zippers that I'm gonna to do today are on the two pockets that are going on the lining. Two different pockets, one quite easy, and then that more challenging one. So I'm not doing a zipper closure on the tote bag, but I think I will do a little magnetic snap that's kind of fun too. So the fabrics I have for today, the main part of the bag I've cut out of this like heavyweight canvas, and then a more decorative fabric for the outside pockets is this really pretty print here. It's printed on a linen type fabric and I like the way the two look together. And then still on the outside of the bag, a darker fabric for the base and for a bit of trim on one side of the pocket. So those three fabrics make up the outside of the bag. And then I'm doing a lining. Now you don't necessarily have to line the bag, but it does give me a chance to do two other pockets for you. So I've cut my lining out of this printed nylon that I have, which kind of looks cool with everything, but I'm gonna uh, sort of hide it on the inside so it doesn't show on the top edge anyway. So so I never like to say that this is how I've done it, therefore this is how you have to do it and use my exact measurements. No, that you do you. You make this bag however you wanna make this bag or just enjoy watching me make this bag. But I am gonna share with you the measurements that I use that I worked out. So you make it just as big or small as you want. Do all of these pockets, just one of these pockets. Really, it's your bag. You do it however you wanna do it. So let me show you what I've got cut out and we'll just Get busy. My bag is going to end up being about 15 by 15. So this is one side of the bag and so I've added seam allowance. So this is 16 by 16. All of my pieces are going to be 16 inches wide. So that's the one side of the canvas. The other side of the canvas, I'll be setting in a pocket right into the seam. So it's still 16 inches wide, but then I've come down seven, in four, down another six, and so that leaves eight across here. So the eight plus those two fours gives me the full 16. Okay, so that's the main body of the bag. And then for the print, I've got a piece that's 16 by 10, and this is going to make a pocket across the bottom of one side of the bag, and then a piece that is exactly the same as this, but three inches taller. So it is, again, 16 inches wide, but then instead of coming down just seven inches, it comes down 10, in four, down six, and then that leaves eight here. So these two go exactly together. And that's gonna be one of my first sewing steps. Then in this gray, I've got a piece for the base. So again, that's just 16 inches wide. And I want the base to be four inches deep. And so I've added seam allowance, so it's five by 16. Then one more piece of gray that I think I'm gonna play around with doing kind of a backing on this pocket just to make it really sturdy and so it can't sort of stretch out on the top edge of the pocket. So this piece is again 16 inches wide, but I've cut it a good inch and a half deeper than this one. So it's gonna fold over and give a nice little bit of trim, but also a really good amount of stability to the top edge of that pocket. Alrighty, so that's everything that I have for the outer bag. For the lining, I'm planning one pocket that gets set right in and you make a space for the zipper and the zipper goes behind. So for that, I've got two squares that are eight by eight. My zipper's a little bit longer than eight, but that is okay. I'll be trimming it down. Then another pocket that's going to go inside is also gonna have a zipper and it's gonna just kind of sew into a little pouch. It's really nice and simple. And then, 
as I said, I don't really want this lining to show on the outside of the bag. So I've cut two strips that I'll finish off the top edge of the lining with. So again, 16 inches wide. I want to have two inches of this showing. I added seam allowance, so it's three inches by 16. And then that leaves the whole big lining piece and it is 16 inches wide. And remember my two sides are gonna end up being 15 by 15 with that four inch base. So that's 34 total. But because I've got these two inch pieces going on top, they're gonna to end up being two inches. So I've cut this to be 31 by 16. Alrighty, so I'm going to start with sewing what I think is the easiest pocket. And that is for the front, my two pieces that have this pocket extension. And I'll be sewing around this whole side with the extension and it's going to flip down and just look like a normal seam, but there's a pocket hidden right in there. So it's so nice and clean and easy. Like that is dead simple, but this is the one that you can't do as an afterthought, right? You have to build that piece in. You can put a seam there, but it's not nearly as clean looking. So add that in when you're planning out your bag. So I'll take this to the machine and we'll sew that bit. I don't have to finish any of my edges, like zigzagging or surging because I'm lining the whole thing. So I'm just gonna sew and press and this side of the bag will be done. So here I am, regular needle, regular stitch, like just everything is straightforward and normal here. Starting with a little back tack and then I wanna make a nice clean pivot around all of these corners. And the only one that I want to be accurate on really is this last one. I want to make sure I come back to the 15 line or 5 8 line just so my two openings, like the two ends of the opening, line up nicely across the fabric. Okay, this just comes up, the pocket goes down, and literally it's that easy. Like there's your pocket. So this is the inside of the pocket. And if I flip it this way, isn't that just so nice and clean looking? I'm just gonna press this down. It looks just like a seam, except there's your pocket opening. So like dead easy, right? So I'm gonna call that one side of the bag done. All right, for the second side of the bag, it's going to have this pocket with my little trim which is just that bigger piece wrapping over. So that's pretty straightforward. I do want them to be right sides together and I'll just sew straight across there at the 5 eighths or 15 line. I'm gonna press this seam going up toward the gray. That's the inside fabric that's going to wrap around. So first I'll press the seam that way going up. And then I'll let the gray come over. I'll arrange it nicely on the outside now so that I get a nice straight looking edge there. I think I will pop a few pins in here just so this doesn't shift around on me at all. Right in the ditch and then my stitch line will just disappear. So stitching in the ditch, you do have to, you know, have some accuracy and be able to sew right there. So you might hear that my foot is going like zoom, 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 just little tiny bursts as I try to sew really nice and accurately right in that ditch. And right here at the end, I'll show you what it looks like if I stray, if I get up onto the gray, it won't look that great. And so that's why I'm just gonna do it right at the end where it will be hidden. So there's where I'm stitching in the ditch. You don't even see the stitching, but if I do wobble and hop up onto the gray, it can look kind of yucky. So you really want to try to be right there in that ditch. But that looks good, right? Okay, I'm happy with that. And just another little press across that top edge just to set the thread. Beautiful. Okay, so now I can just set this piece right against the bottom edge of this square 
looking good. And then I'll throw a few clips in there just because now I've got three layers that want to scoot around. So yes, I'll be sewing around all three sides there just to hold all these edges together. But then I want to do two vertical lines to divide this into three pockets. So my total width is 16, right? When I take off seam allowance, it's 15. That divides nicely into three. So I want them all the lines five inches apart, half an inch seam allowance on the side. So five and a half inches from the edges. I love my friction marker for jobs like this. Good. So all three sides and then those two lines. And I'm just gonna sew at the edge of my presser foot so that this line doesn't end up showing later. And you see that this top layer of fabric seems to be a little looser, a little stretchier than the layers underneath it. So what I'm gonna do right now is just stop and come back the other way with that layer facing down. Anytime you've got one side that's stretchier, put that stretchier edge down. So you see how that's a little bit loose? If I kind of almost put a little bit of a curl on it like that, I'm not hold, pulling it back. I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it. Those feed dogs underneath are going to just ease that in for me nicely. See how I'm kind of putting a bit of a curl on the fabric as I go through. And then you would never know that there had been anything loose there. It looks just perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Because I'm aware that this top fabric has a lot more give and play than the layers underneath, I think I'm smart in this case to start at the top and come down for these vertical lines. Therefore, if I do have any funny business, I can kind of let that extra go off the bottom. Uh, but if I go up, I might end up with a little pucker right at the top here, which I do not want. I'm gonna start at the top of the gray and I probably won't like the way it looks. I might cover it up with a bar tack, but let's see. My hands are trying to ease back this top fabric so that it doesn't give me a problem. And yes, I definitely could have interfaced this, but I think I'm actually gonna be okay. Yeah, see this little, little bit of nonsense here? I'm just gonna bring that right down. It's gonna get hidden in the seam. Nobody's gonna know that happened. See that? I definitely would not want that at the top, but here it's gonna get hidden in the seam. I'm not worried. Let's do that again on this side. Another thing I could have done is sew the vertical lines first, then my three sides. That would have been smart too. But as I say, I'm not worried about that at all. Alrighty, so those top edges where my back tack is, no, I don't love that too much. It does not look beautiful. It will look better when I erase that green friction marker, but Let's try out a bar tack. Right on top of that first stitch line, just to kind of bulk it up and make it look more intentional. Two millimeters wide and 0.5 millimeters long, just on a regular zigzag. Right? Oh my gosh, yes, that looks so much better than this one, doesn't it? Okay, good, I like it. Beautiful. Okay, you wanna see the friction lines get erased? Okay, let's go to the iron. Okay, so you can see the green lines there. That looks good, right? Okay, and that little bit of bagginess, eh, forgive me. Don't judge me, please. Okay, so I've got that all pressed flat. When I sew on the base, that's all gonna get caught in. 
and that just looks super slick okay the base so here is my five inch wide piece right is for the four inch base now if you ever use a twill weave keep in mind that that is the right side and the plain weave is the wrong side the twill weave where you see that angle that's the right side i'm putting that base part right side together with this one side here good i'll sew that and then right side together with the other side over here easy peasy so here's my first pocket remember how nice and fast that one was and the bottom edge of this goes right side together with the base here these little clips are great there's um a link in the description box to these little clips my friction pens everything that i love to use every time i sew Okay, so again, 5 8 line or 15 line right here. Oops, <laughs> I'm still in that bar tag. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so yes, back to the regular straight stitch here. Side, same thing. And back to the iron. So there you can see that bagginess is all tucked neatly into the seam. And on the outside, it all looks ducky, like just as if it was perfect right from the start. Okay, I have a lot of seams here on that side. And so that definitely wants to lay going toward the base. So I will definitely press this one toward the base as well. Okay, sweet. I'll press on the outside as well. Beautiful. I will be boxing these corners. And so this base is really just going to look as if it's only on the base. It's a really nice clean technique. So hold on for that. So right now that means that this whole outer bag is all done. Now I'm going to put together the lining. For the pocket with the zipper just set right into the fabric, I'm going to take one of my pocket pieces and I'm going to draw on the wrong side of that. And well, I definitely want to have seam allowance sticking up above the zipper. So I'm going to start by drawing a line about an inch below the top. Definitely don't want the zipper going the whole way. So I would say I'd probably want at least an inch from each end as well. Good. So now the actual size of the opening, I want the teeth of the zipper to be able to sit in that opening comfortably, but not uh, sloppily. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't want the opening to be too big. So I think I shall go three eighths of an inch. So I'm putting that three eighths line along the first line I drew. Good. So there's my perfect little rectangle and my zipper is going to be sitting right in that space. So that's drawn on the wrong side. I'm going to take the right side of the fabric, put it right side together with the lining, and I want to have it centered. I can put this anywhere on here. So yeah, I'll have it about there, but centered. And I'll put my pins in the middle, but I'm basically going to be sewing on that red rectangle all the way around. So let's go do that. So on a step like this, you want to just do really nice, clean pivots on the corners. I think it makes it a little bit easier if I don't do my back tack right in the corner. So I'm going to start midway through the top. And then I can just walk the wheel to sink the needle down right at one corner. Pivot. Slowly. Good, sink the needle down at the second corner, pivot. You don't want to go past those corners and you don't want to be shy. You really want to nail it. So walking the wheel helps a lot there. Good. So just like that, you can see my rectangle 
I love my little Zwillig scissors for this kind of job. I think they just feel like they're so sharp and so precise and have such good little points on them. It's so good for a job like this. Alrighty, so I'm cutting right down the middle of that rectangle, stopping about a finger width from the end, and then angling over and cutting right to that corner. You have to come frighteningly close to the corner. You don't want to cut your stitch, but you have to get right in close or else it doesn't turn nicely. But yeah, I am cutting through both layers. Stop that finger width from the end and then angle to the corner. Bam, there. Good. So that's why you want nice little scissors with a good point. Turning down my iron because this is nylon. I don't want to melt it. So now I take that piece that I sew to the right side of the lining push it all through to the back, it makes the nice little window that the zipper can now sit behind. If you have any pulling or puckering on your corners, it just means that you were a little bit chicken. You were a little shy of cutting into those corners, so go back in and make those corners like just no puckering at all is what you're looking for. Okay, when I press this, and first I'm gonna try it in a corner, make sure my iron's not too hot for this nylon. I wanna pull that pocket out of the way, like really pull it so I know it's flattened right out here. And then I can press my seam allowance going up toward the pocket and then bring it down. And then that makes that edge just a lot nicer, a lot more cooperative. Okay. Same on this little edge here. I want to pull it down like away from the seam itself and then press the seam allowance going again toward the pocket. So this time it's going down, but it's both times or both sides are toward the pocket and then out. So you can see this is definitely a more challenging pocket than the first two, right? If you want to try a pocket like this, try it on the lining first, right? Make all your mistakes on the lining. I think that's pretty decent. So now my zipper is just going to lay right in that space. I want the slider to fold in. Now you can just sew on the edge around that little window. However, I'm gonna try to see if it's easier to sew this way first. So I have it sitting exactly where I want it to sit. And now I'm gonna go in and sew just beside that line just to keep that looking nice and clean. In fact, you know what? I could do all four sides like that and then you wouldn't see any stitching on the outside. Well, you know what? That might just be a little miraculous breakthrough. I'm gonna do that. So do you see what I mean? I'm gonna sew right on that same line of stitching on four sides and then there will be no stitching that shows because it's that little step, that stitching around that window, it can look kind of terrible. It's pretty hard to make it look really perfect all the way around. Let's do it from the inside. And then my zipper slider is there. You know what? I'm going to just move that slider right off the end. I'll come back to it after. All right, let's do this. So I'm not using a zipper foot here. I'm using a regular presser foot and I'm sewing right on top of my first line of stitching. Keep a bit of tension on it so that it lays nice and straight. That's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna zip it up in the other side. It's sitting where I want. I'm gonna flip the top layer out of the way, hang on to the pocket layer, and then pin that nice and flat. And I think I want my pins going off to my right here so that I can have the edge on my right when I'm sewing. On this side, I'll just go until the slider's in my way. I can either just try to lift up and pull it, or you know what? There's no problem with just stopping because you're not gonna see my stitching. I don't have to worry about having like a yucky looking back tack that's gonna show. You're not gonna see this at all. So I'll just stop, move the slider, and then continue on. So that side is sewn. So now it's just the two little ends. In between the bag and the pocket, I find that little triangle and I'm just gonna sew right up on my line of stitching there, right on the triangle. And none of this stitching had to be as precise as I had to be on that first rectangle when I sewed around on that red line. 
that's the only time I had to really, really nail it and be accurate. Right here, I'm just sort of duplicating where I was, and if I wobble or go past, it's not going to show. Good. So now all four sides are sewn. The zipper is nicely set in there. No stitches show. Looking good. I can cut off the extra bit of zipper just so it doesn't get in my way. Alright, that's pretty sweet. So that's what the outside looks like. I can give that a little bit more of a press. So you can do a little edge stitch all the way around that window. I don't love this spot right here. I'm going to go in and just sew a little closer in there and see if I love that edge a little bit more. So what I'm not loving is this. Like see how that can open? And so I'm just going in. What I want to do is just sew where it's folding. I think that where it's folding is good. I just don't want it to be able to lift up from that fold. Well, that's got it. Okay, I'm happy now. So now on the inside, I don't have a pocket yet. I just have a zipper that's been half murdered because I sewed it so many times there. But none of this trial and error sewing shows at all. So that is all good. All right, now I take my second piece of fabric, my other eight by eight square and put those right side together. And then I think I might just surge around these edges. You can just sew. You don't have to surge because I think the serger will just do a really nice job cleaning that up. So it's just the two edges of the pocket going through. There's my little triangle from the window. And here we go. Keep the bag out of the way. You don't want to cut that in the serger. Once my needles are clear, lift and pivot. There we go. So there's the inside of the pocket, all nicely surged. The outside of the pocket has no stitches showing. And there's your pocket. So that's pocket number three. So that pocket's looking pretty great. Inside is nice and clean, and I'm happy with that. Now, before I do the fourth pocket, I just wanna put on my two little trim pieces that go right on the top of both sides of the lining. That's just an easy step. I'll just be sewing straight across there. All right, so one of these to both ends, just sew straight across and then press. Okay, and then take that to the iron. I'm just gonna press it going down. I think that the nylon wants to turn more than the canvas does. Oh, that looks good, right? Nice, super slick. Same on the other side. I'll push the seam allowance going down. All right, so let's get on to that fourth pocket now. So for this one, I think I want to surge around all four sides of this pocket piece first, just because this nylon frays so much and I don't want all those threads to be getting in the way of the zipper. So I'm just surging around the edges, but if you don't have a serger, of course, you would just zigzag. And again, just let my needles clear the edge and then pivot. For this pocket, I'm basically sewing up a little pouch that can be attached to the tote bag inside, outside, and in a couple of different ways. My zipper is just a little extra long and I like that. So I line up the opening edge and I wanna have the zipper right side together with the fabric. And then the reason I like it extra long is because then I can move that slider right out of the way. And then while I've still got my zipper together, I don't wanna flip it or twist it. I wanna slide that in of the zipper right to the opposite end and line it up the same way. That little raw edge goes right to the end and clip. Okay, so now it's just a matter of sewing down one side, back up the other side, and closing up the side. So this is a nice fast one. When you can move the slider right out of your way, you almost don't even need to change to the zipper foot, but I think I will use my zipper foot this time. Put it on the left, and then I can move my needle to the left. So that allows me to sew right beside the teeth of the zipper. Okay. 
because I always like to have the edge on my right when I'm sewing, from this side of the zipper, I'm gonna start at the bottom end and come up. Good. And now, I might just pop that zipper foot to the other side, switch my needle back to the center so that I can do a little edge stitch on both sides of the zipper. I wish the zipper was one more inch longer so I could get that right out of the way, but I cannot, so what can you do? So here we go for a little edge stitch. And now I don't want to stop with a back tack. I don't want a back tack showing there because that stitch line will show. So instead, I'll just lift up, push the slider out of my way, and down. And then back down the other way. Kind of working in a little bit of a donut here with that zipper done up, but I can slide that slider back to be more convenient. There, so that little edge stitch just kind of cleans it up. It might look a little wobbly here and there. I'm gonna live with that, it's the lining. Okay, so now I flip it right side together. I'm gonna move that zipper out of the way. Now zippers can be tricky when you want them at the top of a pouch. That's when you can get into some dimple corners and there's a few tricks that I've shown in other videos, but you know what's way easier is just don't have the zipper at the top. Just fold it a little bit above the zipper and then you're just sewing two straight edges. So I'll switch back to the regular presser foot. My needle's back in the middle. And then I'm just gonna go down both sides. Okay, so you want that zipper open so that you have a space to turn it later. But I still wanna keep the teeth together and I want to make sure that this fold is parallel to the zipper, that I'm not going crooked there. And I'm gonna do a little back tack right over the zipper. Now I can cut off that extra zipper, trim my threads, and then I'll take that to the iron. So as I said, I could just sew across the top and leave this pocket flapping, which actually sounds weird, but it, you'll see it in a lot of store-bought tote bags and it works. Uh, but for me, I think I'm gonna sew around all three sides so that I get that double pocket. So I've just moved the slider out of the way, got five or six pins all pointing toward the center. I guess I actually have seven pins all pointing toward the center. And then I'm gonna be sewing nice and close to that edge all the way around that pocket. So to edge stitch like this, I just leave the right hand toe of the presser foot hanging out over the edge, and that lines me up nicely. And again, I could do a little small back tack right over the teeth of the zipper. Nice clean pivot at the corner, sink my needle down and turn. On a nylon coil zipper like this, you can just sew right over the teeth and in fact, I not only want to sew right over it, but I want to do a back tack just to make sure it's strong there. So just slowly, and then back tack at the top edge. There we go. So that pocket's on now, and it's got a pocket here, and then the zipper pocket. So it's like a two-in-one pocket, I like that. So that means the whole lining is ready. Okay, so the whole outside of the bag is done and the whole inside of the bag is done. And I just laid them out together to make sure they ended up being exactly the same size and they are. If they weren't, I would trim one down to be the same as the other, but they are pretty good. So now, just before I sew the side seams of both of those bags, I'm going to attach the straps to the outer bag and I'm going to attach that magnetic closure to the lining. So two things to do before we complete the bag. So I've got these two straps, they're polypropylene webbing and they're 24 inches long. I've cut them and then just touched a lighter to the end so that they can't fray. The straps go on upside down, exactly opposite to how you want them to end up. And I just wanna have them, like it doesn't really matter how far from the edge they are, as long as it's consistent. So let's do three and a half inches from the side and make sure it's not twisted as you bring it around and have the same measurement here. Not twisted, and it goes up like that, three and a half. So all those need are a little back tack right across all four of those points. If 
For the little magnetic closure that I'll be putting at the top of the bag, I need four parts. The little outie part, the little innie part, and then two back pieces. This kind of hardware merely can make a bag look professional, but it's actually really simple. So let me show you how to use these. They're dead easy. First, with my friction pen, I wanna mark the center of that top piece. And so that would be there. I wanna also mark this center uh, vertically too. So it's coming out at two and a half, so one and a quarter. That would be my center right there. Both sides, and I am marking it on the right side of the fabric. Then I'll take one of the pieces, doesn't really matter if it's the innie or the outie, but I'm just kind of laying it on its side so that I can now just put a little mark on either side, like a little vertical line there. And then with my favorite little sharp scissors, just wiggle the tip in and snip. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did iron on a square of interfacing onto both wrong sides just to keep everything stable so just a little snip in my vertical line that's it then i'll take one and poke it through those little snips i made put on the back piece and then it's kind of like a big staple like you just fold down those little arms there we go so it's nice and tight in there it's secure and that looks good okay so this will be the inside of the bag and then it just snaps together like that like doesn't that elevate the whole thing so much i love that i'll put a link in the description box to either very similar or hopefully even the exact same they're just so easy and they really do add a nice touch so now I'm putting the lining right side together and the outer bag right side together. And the rest from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be sewing both side seams of the outer bag and the inner bag, but on the inner bag, I'll leave a gap on one side. So I think I'll do that first, just so, so my mind doesn't wander and I forget. I definitely wanna have like a good six inch, like with my hand at least on one side of the lining. And that's how we're gonna turn the whole bag right side out after. So it's really important. And and I always start from the open end. If I start from the closed end, I'm not 100% sure that it's going to line up at the top. What seemed to match? So I'm gonna just nail that together. And even if that throws me off at the top edge, I have some wiggle room in the seam allowance here. I don't know why that's not matching, but it is important to me that it matches. So I'll just give myself that little wiggle room at the top. So I'll we'll leave that gap. There's a little back tack and then jump down like a good hand width. So boxing the corners is still to come. I do it in a nice, easy way. Here we go. Line up that seam. Nail that together. Okay, that edge matches up. That's good. So no gap on this side, just right down the side. So same thing on the main bag and my two pocket edges, I kind of designed them so that they didn't line up because I didn't want a, you know, bulk on top of bulk. But down here at the base, that's what I want to line up. I want to match that seam to that seam right there and nail that together. Good. Same on this side, match those up. And there's no gap on the main bag, just right down the sides. And I can peek in there and make sure that those seams lined up. That's good. All right, let's go to the iron. So at the iron, I've got the bag right over the end of my ironing board, just like you're trying to dress your ironing board. I wanna press that seam open and flat. This is the side that has the gap and I just want to continue that fold right down. And then while I've got it on the board here with that seam right in the middle of this triangle at the end here, I want to just put a pin two inches or five centimeters from the point right there like that. And then two inches or five centimeters from the point, stick a pin. Okay, that's now ready to go to the machine. I'll be sewing straight across those points to box the corners. Exactly the same thing on here, but on the main bag, I don't even have to measure. But where I'll be sewing here is right beside my original line of stitching there. So that's what's going to make it look like that gray base is really just a base. 
you'll see what I mean in a minute, I think. Okay, so right there. Okay, so I want this right in the middle of this triangle and stick a pin. Okay, so I make sure the back is all flat and then I can see my line of stitching there. That's what I want to sew right beside, like just to the left of. Okay, lining in the same way. So now I don't have a line to follow, but my point comes right to the edge of my needle plate so I can just kind of cruise that right through as a guideline. Okay, let's go flip these out. All right, so both bags are done and inside out still. And now we're gonna flip one right side out. It doesn't really matter which one we flip right side out, but I'm gonna do the outside bag just to show you that boxed bottom. When you turn it out like that, the corners just line up and it's beautiful. And it's so much easier than drafting a smaller rectangle and drafting your corner cutouts and trying to sew around those corners. Like that is just super easy and it works great. If you wanted, you could put a heavy piece of interfacing on that base to keep it like nice and crisp. I usually don't interface my tote bags. I don't mind them being kind of soft, but that works nicely for me, okay. So this is right side out. As I say, it doesn't matter which one you flip right side out, but the one that is now right side out is gonna go inside the one that is still inside out. Shove this inside and it all goes in, including the straps. They go down in between the layers. They're gonna come back out later, I promise, but right now they're just gonna go inside. So we're bringing the two top circles together. These seem to be fitting pretty good, but if you do end up with one that's just a little bit bigger than the other, then flip the whole thing so that the bigger one's on the outside. It just pins together much easier, of course, if the bigger circle is on the outside. I'm gonna put seam to seam and seam to seam centers to center so at least four pins or clips around this whole big circle we really are in the home stretch now i'm going to sew around that circle and then we'll be able to flip it right side out now where i feel a strap it's not a bad idea to do an extra back tack there there's my magnet The way around. So now this is where that gap comes in. I'm going to reach in and pull that whole bag out. And then before I push the lining inside, I'm going to take it to the iron one more time. Here's the opening of the gap. And to sew that, I'm just going to pull the ends and sew nice and close to the edge. But I don't like to do that until I know everything's good. If I have any gaps along the top edge, I need to go back inside and fix that. So I don't close that up till the end. So right now let's take this to the iron. With the strap going down, that helps to turn the seam allowance down into the bag. And that's what I want. I wanna be able to feel that that seam allowance inside is heading like toward the lining. And I can even kind of run my hand into that gap and make sure it's all coming down that way. Good. I have learned the hard way to not let my iron linger over those uh, polypropylene straps. Those definitely can melt at the iron. Pressing it this way first just makes it so much easier to get a good edge at the top here. And you notice how I skipped over the straps. If I melt those now, that would be sad. I would cry. So that's actually called under pressing. Right? Under stitching, we would stitch right here, getting the seam allowance going toward the lining. But under pressing just does the same thing with just with the iron. It kind of just gives you that nice edge. So now look at that. When I pick up the lining, it already is nicely creased toward the inside. So now I can shove the lining all in and then I'll put it over the end of the board again so that I can press a good edge all around that top edge. And then we just have one trip back to the sewing machine before we're done. Okay, fantastic. So all I'm doing here is a nice top stitch. My magnet is going to determine how far my top stitch can be. And it's not very far. So I think I would be doing my top stitch kind of as an edge stitch with my toe of my presser foot hanging off the edge. 
If I didn't have those magnetic closures, I would do that stitch a little further down. And if I see that lining rolling out, I can just roll it back in. I like the side seam, the way that the printed part actually does line up and it's just that gray strip that sits higher. That worked out nice. Now that magnet, I could do a little bit of stitching around that magnet. I'm gonna try and do like a little semi-circle around that magnet, mainly for the fun of it. That actually was fun. <laughs> and then you can't really see the stitching, but if you could, I think it would look like a cute little semicircle, like a little U shape, really. A semicircle that goes straight up to the top edge. And it's kind of fun to sew around that circle. I'll do the other side. And it's not difficult to be precise here because you've got that magnet as your guideline. Fun. I enjoyed that. I kind of wish it showed more because I think it would look cute. Okay, the gap in the lining. I think we are confident enough now to close that up. So that's the gap. We'll start with a back tack at one end and then just kind of pull it tight so those edges come together and sew really nice and close to the edge. So you'll see a little stitch like that on anything that has a bagged lining, like even a blazer or a jacket inside one of the sleeves. There's going to be a little line like that. And that's just how you close it up after you turn something that's fully lined. Oh my goodness, this turned into a really great bag. I just wanted to show you four different kinds of pockets that I enjoy putting on tote bags, but this bag just turned out great. I really like this one. So it's got the three deep pockets on the one side, good for cell phone, passport, whatever. And then on the back, that sort of more hidden pocket, and again, like whatever you want sticks in there. And I do like that, right? It's quite different. Like this one is very clean looking. This one is a lot more defined. They're both good, whatever you like. And then on the inside, that kind of double pocket with that being a pocket and then the little zipper section too. That's all good. And then on the other side, that zipper that's set right into the lining. That was definitely the trickiest. You can go your whole life without ever having to do one of those pockets, but it's good to know if you ever want to try. And then that magnet. I love that, right? That is good. Nice. So I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you enjoyed the whole process and thank you so much for being here right till the end. I always appreciate that so much. So until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. <laughs>